Hello again. In this short video, I will show you how to use the Atlas function in QGIS. This function is uh, very useful when you have to create several maps and you want to use the same style or map template for all of them. That is scale, colors, legend, north arrow, and so on. The function is called Atlas, not because the Greek Titan, but because once upon a time, a printed map collection used to be called like this. Now, to create a map collection using the Atlas function of QGIS, all you have to do is to create a point, line, or polygon layer that you will use to control the position of each map in the collection. QGIS will take the extent or centroid of each feature on this layer to control the central position of each map view in your print layout template. If you want to learn how to create a print layout in QGIS, take a look at the video that I have created for this purpose by clicking up here or follow the link in the description of this video. Thanks for watching and I hope you like it. The first thing we want to do is to set up our layers and style them. It is always better to have everything in order before we move on to the print layout. If we want an atlas layer, that is a layer to control the atlas, we need to have that layer inside our project. In this case, I will show you two different cases, one with polygons and one with points. Both layers have the same attributes. So let's create a quick layout. First, I'm going to add a map that will cover most of the layout except for the top where I will add a title. Then I'm going to add a scale. I'm going to go with a double color scale with two sections to the left and only one to the right in meters and uh, each section to the right will have uh, let's say 500 meters if necessary after the creation of the atlas we might have to change this uh, for now i'm going to add a black transparent black background and a larger margin from the scale to the border of the background and maybe a rounded frame finally I'm changing the font of the numbers, which is done in display, then font, then uh, noto sans and bold, and a little bit larger, and yeah, that's it. Okay, one good thing to do with the scale is to set up the anchor position, because the scale will change depending on the feature you are displaying, unless we display each map of our collection with a fixed scale. For this exercise, since, since uh, I am putting the scale in the bottom right corner of my map view, I'm going to set up the anchor in the bottom right corner of the scale. So if it grows or changes, it will grow from here to the left. Then I'm going to add a legend. This is very simple, uh, just keeping the canals and the lakes, and I will change the patches of each symbol. For the lakes, I created a patch using the shape of one of the lakes and for the canals, I am using a patch created by Klaas Carlson and available for free in the Cartusa open source to special solutions GitHub page under the repository QGIS legend patches. For the legend, just to make it look a bit different, I will choose a transparent white background with a rounded black frame same Noto Sans bold font, and that's it. Finally, I will add an SVG North arrow that I downloaded from the internet and that I modified it with Notepad++ in order to be able to change the colors. I'm using a light blue resembling the lakes and canals and uh, I'm using the hard light blending mode so the blue color can adapt whenever the colors in the map change. Okay, so we have everything we need for our atlas. So creating an atlas is very simple. Just go to the atlas panel to your right and if it's not activated, right click on an empty space in the toolbars area and activate it. Normally, it should be already activated and appear in the fourth tab to the right of the layout. 
The first option, you have to select the layer that you will be used to manipulate the atlas. For the first exercise, I will select the points layer, but I don't want the point to appear in the coverage layer. So I will select the option hidden coverage layer. Then I will select a field in my layer to have a name for each map. This name is useful inside QGIS as a visual aid once the atlas is running. For this atlas, I will not filter my layer with an expression, but I will sort the lakes by name. So you can see what does this mean. Okay, finally, we have to activate atlas. To do that, select your map view to see its properties. Scroll down until you see control by atlas, activated by selecting it, and that's it. Very simple, huh? So if you display the atlas properties here, you will see that the only available option is fixed scale. Uh, that is because we are using points. Since we are using a points layer to manipulate the atlas, and technically a point only has one dimension, the scale will, will be fixed automatically depending on the scale of your map view, as it was when you added it. If you want to change the scale, just change the scale of your map. Scroll up to main properties and change the scale. Okay, now apparently nothing has changed apart from the scale, but if you take a look at the atlas, so go up to the toolbar section and click on the atlas button, and you will notice that other buttons will be available. Just use the arrows to navigate your map collection to see if you are happy with the results. As you can see, now you have a map pear lake. From this toolbar, you can also check the atlas properties and export your images. But for now, let's modify the atlas a little bit more and select the polygons. So in your atlas properties, change the coverage layer to your polygons layer. In this case, lakes polygons. The main difference is that the polygons have two dimensions and the atlas will consider the area of each polygon to adjust the scale of each map. However, you can still set up a fixed scale or set up a margin from the feature to the border of the map view. Right now, we are producing an atlas for every single polygon in our file, but we could filter our file using a simple query expression and use only those polygons that meet a certain criteria. For instance, I can use the expression editor and tell QGIS that I would like to produce a map collection only with those lakes that are artificial and natural. So select the filter with option, open the expression editor, look for fields and values from the expression box and only the fields of your lakes polygons layer should appear. Now double click type which is a field in my lakes polygon layer where the type of each lake is stored. And now write equals to, and then you can check the values within that field by clicking on all unique, which is just below the expressions help window. And you should see all the unique values stored in the type field. So there are un unknown, chinamperos, artificial and natural. In this case, I will select artificial, which means that my map collection, my atlas, will comprise artificial lakes. But I will also select natural. So to select both, before you double click on natural, write or, then select type again, equals, display all unique values and select natural. Okay, now the full expression is finished. Below the window, you have a preview of the expression. Every time it's correct, you will see a number of some gray text. If it's not correct, you will see expression is invalid in red and between parentheses and in blue, more inf. Okay, everything is in order. Click OK to accept the expression and close the window. Good. Now let's explore the atlas. Notice that whenever you change the map, the scale won't change. This is because we added points first and we told QGIS to have a fixed scale for the atlas. 
So let's change that. Select your map, go to properties, scroll down to control by Atlas, and you will notice that now you have two more options. If you select predefined scale, QGIS will try to set up the extent of your polygons the best way possible with rounded values. So you might use a numeric scale for your maps that you can actually use. If you prefer to fit the extent of each polygon based on the polygon, regardless the scale, use margin around feature and just adjust the margin from the polygon to the map view border. Each map will have a different scale and if you use a numeric scale, um, it will not have rounded values. Okay, so far so good, but there is a small problem with our maps. We might know the name of each map by reading the name of the file in the Atlas toolbar or as a small tab on top of each map. But if we see the map itself, we might not be able to recognize the lake. So let's add a label that will function as a title for each map. It's very simple. Just add a label using this icon or uh, going to items menu and then select add label. Then I just customize the fonts and adjust a little bit the label box and that's it. The problem with this label is that it won't change depending the lake, but there is a simple way to change this behavior. Check the properties of the label and click on the button expression below the text editor where it says insert an expression. Okay, for this exercise, I want the name of the lake, its type and uh, yeah, that's it. Okay, I will concatenate it, each element I need to produce this title. So for this example, I will use an expression called concat, then open a parenthesis, go again to the fields and values expression menu, then select name, now use comma to concatenate another value, then I will use text, so I'm adding it by using a simple quotation mark, then I will write space, then is, then space again, and then after the space I'm I'm closing the simple quotation marks. That will let QGIS to know that this bit is text with a space before and after the word is. Okay, then comma again to concatenate another value. And then I will go again to fields and values, but now I will select type and then close parenthesis, parenthesis to finish the expression. If everything is correct, you will see a preview in the bottom left of the expressions window. If you're happy, accept the changes and now you have a nice title for your map. Okay, finally, to export the map, you can just modify the output properties of the Atlas. Again, by using expressions, uh, you can uh, also change the name of your final images. By default, output underscore and then the atlas feature number will appear but if you want for instance the name instead of the number or additional to the number you just have to deselect this option single file export when possible so now let's open the expression editor now that it's available use uh, two pipe symbols which you can also use to concatenate values instead of the concat expression and after the atlas feature number, let's add two pipes, then single quotation mark, underscore, single quotation mark, two pipes again, and then field and values again, double click on name, and that's it. Okay, before we export the maps, uh, let's double check if the scale, since it's going to change, uh, will fit inside the layout. So let's just explore them. So this is map 1, map 2, it's inside, map 3. 
So for instance, map three, it's outside. So we need to change this. So not right now the scale is very big. So let's remove the sequence to the left like that. Uh, let's see if that works for all the maps. Yeah, it works for this one. It's very small, but it works. It still works, works. Yeah, I think it's okay. Okay, this is very small. So let's, um, yeah, I think if we change for this map, uh, and we put a very small uh, scale for the all for the for the big maps uh, it's not gonna work so for this specific map I'm gonna change the scale to just 100 units and I and I will export this map alone but as you can see uh, since we are using the atlas actually the name is already defined for us so just go to layout and export as image And I'm going to save it. And I'm going to save it here, like alone. And I'm going to change the scale, the, the resolution to 200 dpi. And now uh, I'm just will keep looking. So I'm gonna change the scale this again to 500. Okay, so this is this is wrong, but let's see the rest. So yeah, it's inside, which is good. And just let's see if okay the image export format in our atlas. I'm gonna change this to JPEG. And then I'm going to export it using this icon. So the, with this icon, you will export all the atlas as images. So I'm going to create a folder here just for the atlas. And I'm going to change the resolution to 200 and then I'm going to save. So depending on the resolution and the size of your layout, this could take a while. And also depending on the layers and how many styles are you using, etc. Okay, let's open the folder. And now we have all the images, including this one, which is incorrect. But now we can just replace this file, this single file. And that's it. So this should be okay. Excellent. And now you have your maps completely finished. So the, the only thing that uh, I forgot to do here is just to remove the layer of points, but I mean, that's all right. That's it. I hope you like it and thanks for watching.